How's it going guys, Vabav here and welcome to an M1 Mac Mini encoding test. I've got the 8GB variant of the Mac Mini and this is an offshoot of a video I made a couple of days ago which sort of blew up in proportion to the channel size that I have. So thank you all for that, thank you for all the support. But the biggest chunk of comments on that video was about the encoding performance of the M1 Mac Mini. Now me not knowing much about encoding, I had to google it and encoding basically entails transferring from one codec to another, so H.264 to H.265 for example, and I needed some help from another person who's experienced with all of this. So one of the people who watched the video actually reached out to me, so thank you SWAON or SWAON for providing all of the files that I'm going to encode in this video. Those are sort of going to serve as benchmarks for anyone who's looking for performance on the M1 Mac Mini. So I've got 720p as well as 1080p files, they're about 2 to 2.5 gigabytes and about 1 hour each. They're basically episodes out of different TV series as far as I can tell and we're going to be encoding on a Handbrake and Handbrake is very special because not only does it have an Intel based version but it also has an M1 based version. So this video not only will focus on encoding but it'll also focus on how much of an improvement the M1 optimized version of Handbrake will bring compared to the Intel one. So with that being said, let's get into the results. Okay, so let's start off with the 720p file. That file using all of the settings that you see on screen from H.264 to H.265 took about 1 hour and 44 minutes to fully encode. Now that same file again running through the M1 based handbrake took just 63 minutes. So that's already an improvement using the M1 versus the Intel version. The improvement is sort of bigger when it comes to the 1080p file, which again using these settings on screen took about 3 hours and 15 minutes to encode fully, whereas using the M1 version of Handbrake took exactly 2 hours to encode. While all of these tests were done with pretty much nothing running in the background, so the Mac Mini was just encoding and nothing else, it was just sitting there and I just waited for this thing to finish. I also pulled up Activity Monitor to see how much of a difference it makes when it comes to CPU as well as RAM usage. Turns out CPU usage sort of shoots up as soon as you start encoding, but the RAM usage stays pretty constant. And to sort of check on that, I also encoded the exact same file 1080p using the exact same settings on an M1 MacBook Pro. This is the latest M1 MacBook Pro 2020 and it took 2 hours and 5 minutes. But the biggest difference here was this thing comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So according to Activity Monitor as well as the test that I've done, RAM doesn't seem to make a difference. So whether you get the 8 gigabyte variant or the 16 gigabyte variant of the M1 Mac Mini or the MacBook Pro for example, it's not going to make a major difference when it comes to encoding, at least from the beta version of Handbrake that I'm using currently, and at least from the findings that I have so far, which are, if you're using the M1 based software, you're going to get a 40% improvement compared to the Intel based on pretty much any software I believe, I can claim that for a fact. And number two, the M1 even running off of Rosetta is still pretty strong because I think the encoding times that the M1 managed to sort of bring about are still faster than the ones you'd get from, you know, systems that are maybe two or three years old. So the thing to learn here is the M1 is a very powerful chipset and I think for encoders it could be something to look at even if you're buying the base Mac Mini at 8GB of RAM. So thank you all for watching this video, make sure you subscribe down below and make sure you leave thoughts and comments on what you'd like to see next. The channel being such a small one really helps with honing down on specifics when it comes to things you'd like to see on a product just like this video and if you want to see anything else on the PlayStation 5 or the Mac Mini or pretty much anything, make sure you leave it in the comments down below or reach out to me via email. Once again, this was Vabov, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Adiós.